Hi everyone. So I'm just here in the long uh, wind up for the upper deck of the George Washington Bridge. So I thought now would be a good time to record a video. Actually driving up here, um, I was thinking about something because I read the comments and people put very interesting things in there. I was talking about you really got to live a life to be a writer. And then they said, uh, you know, uh, George R.R. Mar Martin, who did Game of Thrones, the original novels that uh, uh, the series is based around. Uh, so I just drove past Bayonne, New Jersey, and they said he was from there. And uh, he even said he didn't live much of a life. He just watched the ships going out to sea and kind of thought about what they were going and what the people were doing. And that's uh, kind of what sparked his imagination. So I thought that was a pretty, uh, pretty interesting uh, alternate take on, on a theory that I generally think is sound. But anyway, I don't know why I started thinking about gods of Egypt today, but I've had this idea for a while, and I thought now, I'm, I've got like 140 subscribers to hit 30,000, so I thought I'd now, I'd hit the, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd do the video that takes me back down to 300 subscribers. But anyway, I loved gods of Egypt, and like many, many things that I love, I went to that movie to roast it because the reviews were absolutely terrible. And I was like, this is going to be so fun. It's going to be such trash. I used to have this thing called Movie Pass, which is like, well, when I signed up, it was like 30 bucks for quote unquote unlimited movies. Um, <laughs> there, there was actually a lot of caveats to that. And then they made things every, even more strict and I quit. Um, but at the time, I could see like, eff effectively, movies were free for me. So I just go see whatever. I I'd, I'd, I'd even like go in to see a movie like just to watch tw 30 minutes and then I just walk out. I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. I'm that's good." Um but uh so uh the Thor movie came out, I don't know, like 5 years ago. And like everyone else in the world, my uh reaction to Thor was like, "Eh, it was okay." <laughs> Thor is a weird movie. Nobody hates it and nobody loves it. Everyone, everyone has the exact same, eh, it was okay. Um, so, but the thing that got me excited about Thor is when they were on Asgard, we got to see how the gods acted with each other and the, the frost giants and all that type of stuff. I said, if this movie can be successful, that means the world is ready <laughs> for a new gods movie. And I got really excited about that. Now it's like, whatever, five, six, seven years later. We are in the DC Extended Universe, which is the DC movies, uh, the, the current crop of the last four of them, which I like a lot. They are very, very slowly getting to Dark Side, and I'm, I think, or Dark Side and Apocalypse and all that type of stuff. So here's the deal: <laughs> um, uh, the New Gods started in like 1972. There's been a bunch of um, compendia of the New Gods was actually really an imprint. Uh, it started, funnily enough, in a Jimmy Olsen book. Basically, um, uh, Jack Kirby, Rage Quit Marvel. DC had a, a deal wait, waiting for him. They are kind of like, oh, we'll give you a studio within a studio. Um, but we need a couple months to gear up for this, so can you just take over Jimmy Olsen? So, um, <laughs> the whole story actually starts in just, like, random issues of Jimmy Olsen with, like, Don Rickles as a guest star. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it was basically Jack Kirby's... I consider it to be the high point of his entire artistic career. He was at the high point of his writing, which is very wonky, but creative. His uh, art had be become classic Kirby, and he still had his, all his faculties. As I've mentioned many times, uh, Jack Kirby had a very sad decline in his quality that was related to his health problems, and, and I'm sure just overwork for his entire life. Um, but, uh, the new gods was amazing. It was basically, it was, uh, it was, it was very religious and mythological. It was, uh, basically heaven and hell were two different planets and there were, uh, uh, gods on there. There were basically angels and devils. That's, that is the shortest way I can describe the new gods. Then they interact with, uh, earthlings. There's, uh, something called the, uh, jeez, I can't believe I'm forgetting like the most famous thing from it. The anti-life equation, uh, which was uh, like the greatest MacGuffin of all time. A, a MacGuffin is just 
uh, an unnamed thing that people chase over. Uh, for instance, in Pulp Fiction, there was this briefcase that they would open it up and gold light would come out and you knew, you never see exactly what they were chasing. Uh, but anyway, um, it was very, uh, New Gods was very deep. I don't think it's ever actually been plumbed. The depths have not been plumbed on how deep it is. Um, it, it was, I think Jack Kirby was not even aware of what a monumental thing he was doing. So uh, basically, long story short, it looks like there were some political shenanigans. There were some uh, changes in distribution. The New Gods, which was supposed to be like a universe of its own, ended up getting, uh, it only lasted a couple years. It folded. Um, it got folded into other parts of the uh, DC Universe. The DC Universe basically just kind of cherry-picked the things it liked from the New Gods. Like, it really likes the dark side and uh, uh, Apocalypse. Kind of likes Orion. Pretty much likes uh, Mr. Miracle and, and Big Barda. Uh, kind of ignores all the other stuff. And like I said, this stuff was deep. It was mythological. It was it was uh, religious. Uh, uh, like I said, I really think... Uh, and it was also with someone who has kids. I, I think it was very much of him wanting very consciously to create his legacy. But then creating his legacy very subconsciously. Uh, he was just a workhorse. You put a you put a piece of paper in him. He, uh, l tons of people have described the very strange way that Jack Kirby would draw a comic book page. He would start at the top left and then just start drawing down. Uh, barely any rulers, no pre-drawing. Uh, just kind of uh, sprung from his head, uh, full like uh, the the uh, Athena, whoever was born from the head of Zeus, fully formed. Um, but again, anyway, like I said, it's been used in the Super Friends and the, the, the Justice League and Superman movies, or the cartoons from the, like 15 years ago. It's popped up a lot in the comics, but they've just taken things here and there. They've never fully immersed themselves in the world. Uh, it's um, not necessarily a complicated world, but um, I would say it's not an easy world. There's a lot of things that are subtle in it, even though it seems like its plan is exploding in broad strokes. But um, I, I got a very good feeling about it. I talked about how the killing joke gave me an ugly feeling in my chest. Uh, the New Gods is the opposite. It's basically, it's a bright new world of possibilities. Um, so it's very, very exciting. I don't think there will ever be a New Gods movie. Um, I think eventually they might make a, you know, like a... A purely new gods like one of those DC animated movies but um so in the DC extended universe the Justice League <laughs> like they've they've touched on parademons they've touched on boom tubes uh, they let uh, they um what was it they, uh, so the big villain of um, the Justice League movie is supposed to be Steppenwolf who I believe is it's like Darkseid's uncle if I remember correctly I'm not uh, confusing it with another character. Not that great of a character. Pretty lame. Um, mainly just has a, a, a cool name taken from a heavy metal band. Um, but uh, the thing is that um, I, there's this thing called head cannon, And head cannon is you believe what you want to believe. <laughs> so uh, like 15 years ago when J. Michael Straczynski said that Gwen Stacy had an affair with Norman Osborn and got pregnant, I just said, head, head cannon says no. <laughs> when uh, when uh, uh, Dr. Octopus uh, had a uh, romantic relationship with the, the, the old, you know, dying version of Aunt May, uh, I said, head cannon says that <laughs> never happened. Um, uh, so I also do this with movies. Like, there's a Tom Cruise uh, movie called Night and Day, and I consider that to be a Mission Impossible movie. I say, uh, even, since he was acting a little wacky, I say, uh, you know, Ethan Hunt got poisoned uh, and made him act a little weird for a little while, and that's what Night and Day is. Uh, anyway, in my head canon, Gods of Egypt is a New Gods movie. It matches the tone almost exactly. It is a bright, fun, happy world of possibilities with good guys, villains, insane visuals, uh, 
God, I just freaking love this. And it got destroyed by SJW creeps and weirdos for no good reason. Um, there's a lot of movies that, as a, I'm not going to say geek, as a comic book fan, you're basically not allowed to like. <laughs> and uh, I like basically all of them, except for like Catwoman. Catwoman was like trash. Um, but uh, I love Gods of Egypt. I love every second of it. I saw it three times in the theaters, maybe four. I'm going to buy it on, uh, uh, actually, I don't have a DVD player. I'm going to figure out how to buy it so I can play it on my like phone and tablet. But, um, uh, so what Gods of Egypt, okay, so first I'll describe why Gods of Egypt got destroyed. Gods of Egypt got destroyed because it did not have an all-Egyptian cast. Um, I'm not joking about this. It's literally just as stupid as that. Um, uh, a, bus a bunch of SJWs who were never, ever going to, uh, uh, see it in the first place got fake offended because it was, um... Not a, uh, it was, uh, not cast entirely with, uh, Egyptians. The fact that there is not remotely enough uh, Egyptian actors who are known by Western audiences to make it profitable was not fair. The fact that the cast was actually just as multicultural as Thor and basically as multicultural as, as all big popcorn movies are these days. You know, you had, uh, you had the guy who plays Black Panther was in there. You had Gerard Butler. You had the main guy who was from Game of Thrones. He's European. You had Elodie Young, who I believe is Indonesian, maybe Thai. Um, uh, you had Hispanic. You had actual Egyptians. The, uh, the director is actually of Egyptian blood uh, and uh, still was absolutely destroyed by SJWs for, again, no good reason because SJWs will always turn on you. There's no way to get around them turning on you. It's going to happen. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, basically everything they said was illegitimate because uh, the movie was a complete fantasy. And I don't mean fantasy in the fact that like gods aren't real. I mean fantasy in the way that it took place in an earth that was flat and circular. It was a big disc. Because at one point, they actually go into space and look down upon Earth. It is a flat disk, just like people believed in the old days. This was 100% fantasy, 100% imagination. And when those two things, that's Jack Kirby to me. He was never limited by anything. He would draw a Tommy gun and it would kind of look like a Tommy gun, but mainly it would just look cool. Um, so it starts off, like I said, it's, it's got a good... It's got one of those classic, you know, popcorn movie casts where it has every single race. Um, uh, it takes place in a completely alternate fantasy version of uh, Earth. So there's no reason to tie it down to actual, you know, oh, Egyptians, it's got to be Egyptians. Then here's the other thing. The Egyptian gods um, in our world uh, did not look like Egyptians. They were described to be basically 15 feet tall. They had either gold or some kind of like uh, green skin. Their blood was gold. They were effectively aliens. So actually having non-Egyptians play the gods of Egypt is uh, would actually be the most uh, accurate thing to do. Um, but uh, it was a really fun, inventive movie. I loved every bit of it. You had a dark side-like character, which is... Gerard uh, Butler, who I believe was Hades. Um, you had an all-father type of character, Brian Brown. You had uh, a guy who is basically like a combination of Orion and uh, uh, Scott Free, aka Mr. Miracle. You had Elodie, Elodie Young, just looking beautiful. I've gotten a lot of clapbacks when I've said she's beautiful. I think she's like exquisite. And then they had another girl. I, I didn't catch her name, but she was nice and curvy and beautiful. They had a nice like uh, two humans uh, wor worked into this story of gods. The way they did gods was also, uh, it was very positive and um, I really liked it. Basically, the gods were, you know, supported by people, they were worshipped and they were followed, but the gods also had responsibilities to the people to provide for them and protect them. Very interesting concept. And then they also had these like weird, you know, sometimes you see a god and he's got like a, he's got like a coyote head and sometimes he's human. They worked that in where basically they transformed into their 
god battle mode and that part was awesome too i i loved it and because they have things like that in uh in um the new gods orion orion actually looks like a monster he looks like like his father like a, a version of dark side uh by the way that dark side is not what dark side actually looks like he grew up looking not as bad as that it's kind of hard to explain uh but anyway uh they did some really good things where they're showing like the two sides of someone the different ways they look they did that with the mother box the mother box could transform orion to look uh more palatable more presentable when he was around humans but his true nature was this ugly kind of beast um and there's some great scenes in the new new gods comics where they do that where um uh they show orion's a very good a good character i think he might be my favorite character in new gods because there's something very human about him he presents himself as this handsome kind of like football player guy but he's basically got this demon blood from his father he's got a lot of anger he's got a lot of inferiority complex he's um cruel he's got his father's cruelty but he has also uh, a redeeming shame in his cruelty he tries to make up for it uh I, I like this idea of a very very flawed and we've seen this like i mentioned in cosmic odyssey where he's kind of elitist and uh he learns to yeah he he's a character who grows um, uh, but anyway, uh, I gotta hit the easy fast and pay for my uh, toll over the 15 bucks across the George Washington Bridge. Yeesh. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll probably have, uh, I'm gonna do that Teen Titans uh, comic book review later tonight.